Hey everyone, in this video walkthrough, we'll be talking about the CS621B exam remote process guide. So I'm going to be talking about Zoom proctoring, I'll be talking about the announcements page, I'll be talking about the encrypted exam PDF, and I'll be talking about scanning and submitting. So I definitely recommend watching this video if any of that might confuse or trip you up on exam day. So just looking at this exam timeline, on or before the test date, the stuff that we need to do is fill out the pretest form, print out the exam's template, which should be on your workspace, print it during the exam, and you should have confirmation that you actually can take the exam remotely. And then this one's really important here. A day before the exam, you'll receive an email from cs621b at berkeley.edu with the following information. You'll get an encrypted exam PDF, a link to the announcements page, and a Zoom link. So let's kind of see what that email can look like. Here's a sample email that I got from CS621B, and it gives me my Zoom link, announcements page, and encrypted exam PDF. So the format of this email might change a little since I'm recording this a week in advance, but these three pieces of information will be sent out, okay? Well, coming back here, let's look at what we have to do before the exam on test day. So put away monitors, disable notifications, ensure your computer or smartphone are connected to power and charging, and then paper notes and scratch paper on your workspace. Okay, so the next thing it says is join Zoom and ensure your camera and microphone are both on. So going to this, to join the Zoom call, this is really, really important here, is we can click this Zoom link button. So I'm just gonna get rid of this video now because you'll see me in the Zoom call. But after I click that, it'll open up a Zoom call that will be recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so what we can kind of see here is that I am recording myself in the Zoom call that was sent out by core staff. Okay, and the next thing that we want to do is access the announcements page. So this announcement page is very important. Okay, so I'm signed into the exam announcements page. And then this is a practice exam. Your exam will actually have a different title. So when I click connect to server, it'll show me this exam announcements page. So on this page, I can ask questions. If I type a question in here, like what is the answer to the first problem? So <laughs> this is actually not a valid clarification, but if you had a clarification, you can ask it like this and you specify your problem here and then you click send. And then announcements that we as staff will give out will come here and they may have an audio, I don't know, description of kind of verbalizing what the announcement is saying. So don't be shocked if your computer sp starts speaking to you. So this is how the exam announcements works. The last thing I want to note is at the top you'll have a timer for how much time is remaining in the exam. This timer is like arbitrarily high, but your timer will be geared to how much time you have remaining. So if you're a DSP student, your timer will be adjusted accordingly. Okay, so that's a bit of, about the exam announcements. So let's talk about this exam that's going to be encrypted. So this encrypted exam will be password protected. And on exam day, right when your exam window starts, on this exam announcements tool, the password will be sent out. And then you could import it and then you'll get this exam. This is actually not your exam, this is a past exam that I encrypted for this video. Okay, so it seems like we're pretty comfortable with the exam announcements, the encrypted exam. So let's quickly talk about how Zoom proctoring is going to work. So during the exam, you wanna make sure that we can see your workspace. And there's some instructions above that talk about this in a bit more depth. So after you join the, work, the Zoom call, make sure that it's recording. So you can see here that it's recording me. Then the beginning and end of the recording must include your face and upper torso. So you can see here, it shows my face, just so we can see who you are. Then during the exam, this part's really, really important. We wanna see your workspace because you're gonna be writing on your printed exams answers template, okay? So one way of showing your workspace is by tilting your exam down like this, okay? Or tilting your laptop down. So. This is slightly annoying because you'll have to crane your neck to see the screen. So what we recommend, if you have access to some external recording device like a phone, 
is that you'll join this Zoom call on that device. So just to show you what that looks, I'm going to join this call on my phone. Yeah. Okay, and then on my phone, it asks me to hear others, please join audio. I'm going to click call using internet audio. And how I join the Zoom call so easily is it was sent to my email. I have my email on my phone. Okay, so after joining here, notice that there's a lot of static because there's two devices in the same room. So what I did on my laptop is I left computer audio. So now my phone is unmuted and it's showing video. So it'll be capturing the audio. So the next step here is we want to move our phone in a position to show the workspace, okay? So if I move my phone over here, notice now that my workspace is recorded, okay? And this is really, really important because during the exam, we want to be able to sh see your hands as you're doing the exam, okay? And then the next step here is you want to share your entire screen using the desktop for the duration of the recording. So how that looks here is if I click share screen, then I'll click desktop one. Now my desktop is being shared, okay? So during the exam, it'll look something like this. If you click this button here, you can only see yourself, but this is also fine if you wanna see both views, but this just is a bit better for space, I guess. And then you'll have your exam open, right? So this is really how your computer is going to look during the exam. You'll have your exam open, you'll have in the top right corner kind of your feed, and it'll be recording you, okay? So once the exam is over and you want to scan and submit, let's quickly talk about that scanning and submitting process. So hopping back to Zoom, when I'm in Zoom and I want to scan and submit, I want to use my phone to scan and submit, right? But the problem here is that my phone is recording me right now. So it's totally okay. We can leave the call on our phone. And now only my laptop is showing a video. But notice now that I left computer audio on my laptop. So very, very important. Please join audio right here. So that now... This meeting is being recorded. Yeah, so that now it's continuing to capture our audio since we left on our phone. And it's been recording this entire time, so don't worry there. So now that I'm here, the next step is that I want to scan and submit, right? So to scan and submit, what we want to do is we want to point our laptop down at our workspace. So then as I'm scanning and submitting, it can see what I'm doing, okay? Once I'm done scanning and submitting, I'll send my exam PDF to my laptop, and then while I'm still screen sharing and while the Zoom call is still recording, I'll submit to Gradescope. Once I've submitted to Gradescope, then I can stop screen sharing, and then I can end this recording, and it'll capture everything that happened, okay? The recording will be sent to us, that is. Okay, so th that is all for the remote exam walkthrough. I hope you all found this helpful and have a good rest of your day.